of, of who you are. And therefore, it will not be a negative experience for you. Understand? Yes. Does this assist you? It does very much. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Sharing. Bashar. Hello. Happy New Year. Good day. Good New Year to you. About, um, about a year ago, I came to you and asked you if there was anything you could suggest to uh, help me um, cover the hills with wildflowers, because last year there were hardly any, and the year before they were so beautiful that I missed them. All right, and what did you do? Well, I did what you suggested. I went up on the hill and uh, did some meditation and saw the wildflowers in my mind, and it seems like we've had one of the most ideal years that I've ever seen for making wildflowers. Lots oh, well, of thank you for creating that. Thank you for giving me the suggestion. So... Um, that's a bright spot in my life, and uh, a little dark spot in my life is that... Bright uh, spot, dark <laughs> spot. <laughs> is all the rest sort of gray? Well, <laughs> no, no, it's well, pretty... All right. Um, is anger. Anger. And yes, oh. there's, there's been quite a bit of anger uh, sort of uh, popping off in my life lately. Oh, all right. How does it serve you? Well... Can you use it in a positive way? You do remember what the positive definition of anger is, yes? At this particular point in time, I'm not, I don't remember now. It is alignment. Alignment with what you know to be true as compared to something you're seeing in another reality. Just alignment. Uh -huh. Comparative alignment. Understand? Yes. It is a rush of knowingness. I am not that. I am this. And what about anger from the other side? That is judgment and invalidation. That's when you start projecting around you to other individuals what you think they ought to be. Rather than allowing yourself to understand that you are the creator of your reality and whatever it is you really desire to experience will be all that you experience when you are centered within yourself, then you will also understand that no matter what anyone else around you does, it cannot touch you in a negative way if you don't buy into it. The idea of negative anger is the belief that someone else can affect your life against your will and it can't happen that way. That's what I'm experiencing. Oh, it. I, I, I sense myself just, it's just uh, evens out. Yes. As it's, and the more, it seems like the more it's projected at me, the more it just sort of evens out. It's really yes. So you are learning and you are assimilating what you need to in that sense. You are learning to blend the definition and balance them in a positive way. That's great. Now, the sooner you allow yourself to understand that it basically comes from you, in terms of your ability to experience the energy that way, in a seemingly negative way, then the sooner you can allow yourself to create only a positive experience of any interaction which generates that energy. Remember, no situation has built-in meaning. Mm -hmm. All situations are fundamentally empty of meaning, blank, neutral. They are props. <laughs> you give them meaning. The meaning you give them determines the effect you get out of it. So if you give a situation a negative meaning, you will embroil yourself within the negative energy of that event and become as that energy. If you give it a positive meaning, you will be intertwined with the energy of that event and get that meaning and that effect out of it, a positive one. So the positive energy that I'm looking for when I get into the obsessive thinking about the anger is the alignment. Is that yes, in saying? a sense. Uh -huh. But first, perhaps it would be of assistance to simply start in what you call the neutral fashion. It may be of assistance to simply look at a situation as simply a situation. And that's it. Uh -huh. Just a situation. That's all it is. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> it's just a situation. This person is there. This person is there. Now, they may have their own meanings, and you may sense those meanings. You may pick up on those meanings and think they're your own. Oh. Understand? I do have a tendency to do that. All right. Yes, so. Just look at it as a neutral situation first. This does not mean you have to become cold uh -huh. and detached in that sense. But the idea is that you can simply regard the circumstance as neutral to begin with. As if the curtain has gone up on act one of a play. You see the characters standing on the stage, but you don't know who they are yet. You don't know what they're all about yet. They haven't said anything yet.
every event can be seen from just such a point of view, as if it is the beginning of something. No matter what you think they are saying, no matter how far along they seem to be, look at it as if it is the moment of the curtain going up. Everything is neutral. You don't really know why that person is saying what they're saying. You don't really know why that person is reacting the way they're reacting. You don't really know the story yet. Now, you may have a built-in sense of whether one individual is using integrity and another is not. You may be able to pick that up, as you say, telepathically. Mm -hmm. But just because you pick that up, you do not have to allow that to color your assessment of what it is they are learning. Understand? What it is they are learning. Yes, and what it is you are learning. You don't have to invalidate the idea. You do not necessarily have to label everything so strongly right away. Mm -hmm. Allow yourself to truly perceive all sides of what is going on. See it in that neutral light. Well, all right, this person said this, this person reacted that way. Now, on the surface, that seems to be a very negative thing. Mm -hmm. But what if the person was coming from this point of view? Then would what they have said be so negative? Maybe, maybe not. Mm -hmm. Allow yourself the opportunity to recognize that even though you may empathically feel what is going on, that does not necessarily mean you have to structurize it or rigidize it with labels because it can change. Even if what you perceive is accurate, it can change. Labeling it so strongly keeps it from changing. Mm -hmm. You freeze frame it, as you say, by applying labels to everything. Yes, I know. I sense that. And I, I get, when, I, when I get into the obsessive thinking, I back off. Then, and, yeah. So. Allow yourself to not be so prone, shall we say, to labeling that this yeah. person by doing this means exactly that. Right. That this person by reacting this way means they are exactly this. Let it become a little more diffused for a moment. Uh -huh. Start playing with different definitions a situation could be. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even some of the most interesting, shall we say, and exciting recognitions can come from absolutely taking what you have labeled them with and reversing those labels and see if it still <laughs> makes sense because sometimes it will okay Understand? i'll do that yes i will That's play around with it and simply remember no situation has built-in meaning the meaning you give it determines the effect you get out of it in your participation okay thank, thank you. you thank you bashar <laughs> shedding Hello, Bashar. And good day and good new year to you. Good new year. Good year to you. Thank you. <laughs> <coughs> well, uh, Ace. I'm trying to not try, and you don't like that. <laughs> Doesn't I matter what I like. <laughs> and it isn't that I do not like it. I simply usually remind individuals that trying is not the doing of the thing they want to do. It is the doing of trying. Yes. But because I do that does not mean that you have to watch every word. I do not mean to make you hesitate to speak freely. Whatever you have to say will come out just fine. Simply say it. Thank you. Um, <coughs> It has to do with me moving to Sedona, I guess is one of my biggest questions. I've no, been right. told I should, or it would be nice for me to go to Sedona. So I, nice, I, all right. I went to Sedona a few days ago, and um, I feel very good there. No, all right. And? And I had an unusual experience uh, in a church. Yes, all I right. I don't usually like churches and things like that. So... I was in this church and I started crying. Oh, all right. Yeah. What a beautiful prayer. Yeah. Was it a well, prayer? Yes. I didn't know. It was a centering and an alignment with the idea of the energy of the area with all that is. It was a release of much old information. Oh. That, that's, that's interesting because I was trying, I thought um, intellectually all that old information was gone. But I guess experientially, it wasn't. Now, also understand, to <coughs> some degree, 
It was also a recognitional release. The idea of, as 